Hello, I am Alessandra Schutti and I'm the head of the contact unit at the Italian Institute of Technology. We study with robots uh, human social cognition with the technological goal of porting on robots a bit of our abilities to interact proficiently with others. Indeed, um, despite the incredible advances that AI and uh, the bodywear of robotics have made in the past few years, still robots lack the natural ability of establishing mutual understanding with us. On the contrary, uh, we humans uh, since our childhood are very good at uh, interacting and understanding each other. Therefore, we believe that uh, children could teach us and our robots um, a lot about how to make them better at interacting and understanding us. Exactly, because they uh, could show us the way to focus on the very basics skills and the very basic minimal cognitive architecture that uh, is necessary to allow the development of uh, full-fledged human social cognition. And if we start looking at the abilities which, uh, with which we were born, indeed we notice that human children start off with very strong pro-social attitudes. Since uh, the very first moments of life, uh, our attention is more oriented to social stimuli. We detect biological motion, we are attracted to faces, uh, to gaze, which is oriented toward us, and before the second year uh, of age, we are already good at performing apparently complex social skills, like understanding what someone else is uh, wanting to achieve a goal and uh, cannot so as to help him or her. This means that since the very beginning of our life, we do not perceive the world for what it is physically, but rather we see it changed, distorted by our brain. In some sense, we could say that our brain augments our reality by biasing our perception and make us attend more, notice more, elements that are more relevant for us in terms of our interactive capabilities. Um, clear evidence is that of mirror neurons. So when someone is moving in front of us, we do not merely perceive a movement or a motion, but rather the very same areas in our brain that are responsible for our action performance become active. In practice, our motor vocabulary becomes a vocabulary to better understand others. And this means that when I see someone passing me a blush, for instance, I don't only immediately realize the intention driving this action, but rather even something more. For instance, in this case, I realize very clearly that uh, this person is caring about the object he is passing to me, and uh, I will consequently handle it with care. And this is just one example of the myriad of different signals that we constantly exchange whenever we are trying to establish a mutual understanding or a shared goal. And most of this information exchange occurs without our awareness, below our level of awareness. Um, so this is not cognitive loading, so it's very efficient. On the other hand, it is very difficult to be studied. Um, that's where having a humanoid robot might help, because it allows us to have an interacting agent uh, on which we have full controllability. So iCub, the humanoid robot for instance, can interact with me, while the experimenter keeps perfect control over how it moves and over how it perceives and how it decides to react, which implies that this allows us to investigate, for instance, each of these signals in a separate way or 
predefined combination of them by keeping full control. And so we can allow the robot to sense one of these input skews at a time and see how far it can go in the interaction. Or vice versa, we can try and see whether we understand how to communicate through the robot motion the very same signals. To give you an example of the former approach, we have uh, enabled ICAB to detect through its cameras biological motion, as newborns do. And we have seen that this qualifies quite well as a basic ability, because uh, using the same mechanism, uh, we've noticed that it scales up to more complex social skills, like recognizing actions from different visual perspectives, for instance, or synchronizing with the action of a human agent. As another example, we enable the robot to detect again from vision alone uh, if a motion is performed with care or not. So without knowing an object, the robot can understand if the person is moving it carefully or not, so as to be able to adapt its own movement the next time it will handle that object. And these are just two examples of the many cues that the robot can read from our behavior. But we have also the dual approach. So for instance, seeing whether also robot actions can become a form of communication. And we have explored, for instance, if a robot can express an attitude. So can we design robot motions so that uh, they communicate whether the movement is meant to be aggressive or kind. And we found out that it is not easy, but if you correctly find the right kinematics, then a robotic action can evoke the same neural responses in the insula as a human actor. And it can evoke also important changes in the way the human partner behaves in response. So a robot that moves aggressively can evoke a more aggressive reaction in the movement of the person. And again, this is just one example, but we have seen that there are many information that a properly designed robot motion can convey. For instance, the force that is necessary to lift a certain object, of the effort that the robot is putting in performing a certain task. This approach has shown to be effective in defining and understanding which are the basic cues, the building blocks of our comprehension uh, of our partners. But this is not the whole story, because in addition to that, what we need is cognition to extend our competencies, our skills of interaction beyond short stretch of time and very limited contexts. And to do that, we really need to think from an architectural point of view, rather than study each skill in isolation. And we are now trying to explore different ways to integrate our perceptual and motor skills the one that we have investigated separately so far, with uh, other important cognitive processes like memory, internal simulation or motivation. We believe that this is the necessary way to go if we want to build more humane robots, intended as robots that are more considerate of the human and that are able to adapt to their partner's needs. Before concluding, I would like to share with you a consideration. So, I posit the importance of the developmental inspiration. But uh, when uh, I think of the developmental inspiration, I have the sensation that in most cases, this is the kind of uh, video that we have in mind, where the child is showing curiosity, exploration, and very nice sensory motor coordination. But this is just a brief moment in a child's life in which he is alone, but most of child's life is actually embedded in a social context. 
and uh, sometimes I have the impression that in most developmentally inspired cognitive architecture this component is not uh, highly represented. Indeed, if we look at the core cognitive abilities that uh, emerge from reviews of the existing cognitive architecture, uh, components of s related to sociality or to affect uh, do not appear as the most important. And there seems to be the assumption that social processes rely or are very similar to non-social ones. But this is not a given, so if we look at neuroscience, we realize that uh, this is still an open question, whether social and non-social processes are similar or different. And there are even researchers that are suggesting a stronger view, hypothesizing that uh, um, social processes are actually the basis, the precursor of all other cognitive abilities. And this poses the question whether maybe also basic uh, cognitive mechanisms could differ when they are embedded in social context. And we are actually finding some results in this direction, suggesting that perception changes when it is involved in an interactive setting, and that even basic learning processes might benefit of um, considering including also social components. So, for instance, reinforcement learning processes might benefit of considering in competitive game dynamics like that of rivalry and not only uh, game performance metrics. I think there is still a long way ahead to go and therefore I'm pretty happy to be part of the ICOG initiative an open source initiative started at the Italian Institute of Technology, which aims uh, at sharing and joining forces toward a common cognitive architecture for embodied artificial agents. And I look forward to the better understanding that this kind of effort will bring uh, about human cognition. I want to conclude by thanking you for the attention and thanking all the collaborators who made this research possible. I will be happy to reply to any questions or curiosity, also via email. Thank you.